Hello and welcome back to Wings Geo. While I'm still waiting for the roads to dry up uh, from our three days of snow here in Texas, I spent the evening uh, cleaning up my hard drive uh, from files that I no longer needed. And lo and behold, guess what? I actually found a bunch of uh, footage that I so far have not used. Uh, it is a stretch from Fright Ride, Texas to Sherman, Texas, one of my one of my favorites uh, around here where I live, with uh, lots of twists and turns, and uh, that is fun to ride in a spirited manner, but also in this case just uh, leisurely riding along and uh, enjoying the scenery. As a quick follow-up uh, to my air filter modification video that I posted today looking for the comments of some viewers. I just want to reiterate, it is definitely not a must-have or must-do mod. It is just something that I kind of stumbled over and because the access is so easy and it is also very easy reversible, I basically tried it out and uh, I can only, at least for my part, report only positives and no negatives back. Uh, the drivability of the bike has not been affected whatsoever in any negative way and if anything from my butt dyno I would say that uh, I picked up a little bit of torque there as uh, the bike seems to pull ever so slightly stronger than before which is like I mentioned pretty much all I needed again I know this engine is not uh, supposed to be a racing engine like the H2 for example but it is sure nice to have that little bit extra pickup and uh, obviously the exhaust the note from the Agostinis without the DB killers, for me personally at least, uh, sounds fantastic. The other question that seems to be coming up in the comments over and over is if there's any remap that I did. And no, I did not do any kind of remap as uh, the instructions uh, that came with the Agostinis basically said there is no remap required whatsoever and uh, honestly I don't think uh, switching the Moto Guzzi paper filter to the K&N plus a little bit extra airflow with my Swiss cheese mod would require that and again the bike doesn't seem to be effective in any negative way. The only other thing that I did notice is according to my gauge cluster my miles per gallons actually picked up from mid 50 miles to the gallons to mid 60s. Uh, if that is correct or not, I'm not 100% sure. I was a little bit surprised. I don't know if that has something to do with the engine still breaking in, but I will definitely double check that against it when I do my next fill up at the gas station and see uh, what uh, the actual numbers are, as sometimes these gauges can be a little bit off. One other thing that I did notice and that has uh, nothing to do with the air mod here or the exhaust is uh, initially when I got in the bike compared to the V85 the transmission seemed very very stiff and the first gear seemed to engage uh, rather difficult but uh, after the first 200 miles uh, it seems to get easier and easier at this point and uh, so hopefully this will continue this trend and uh, be hopefully match the transmission of the V85 which I would probably say the same thing uh, after about 2000 miles I think it, that is really when I felt that the transmission was fully broken in and that the gears were starting to shift super easy. In uh, keeping the tradition of the oh by the way there is one more thing I wanted to say thank you for all the interaction and comments that you guys have been giving me. I truly enjoy it and partially even learn from it and discover new things. Uh, just to bring up one example, one of my viewers, uh, his name is Xtridus1, um, he pointed out on the V7, on the top of the forks, there's actually a black cover and uh, underneath you will actually see <coughs> finely machined nuts underneath that look much much better than the plastic cover that are covering it and apparently these are shipping covers as he pointed out and to be honest with you I would have never known until he actually pointed that one out so thank you for that try this one 
and uh, please keep them comments going. Until next time, bye.